Hello and welcome Universe Moon, this is Smackdown Live, we are past Judgment Day, we are beyond what was an, an enthralling and thrilling night of action at that event, and there is one thing we can take away from it all, no matter what, is that we still have the ace of Smackdown Live on top, and that it was 25 months and not a day more in regards to Bobby Fish and that WWE Championship. But that's not what, what we're on about here tonight. That's not what we're going to bother with in the main event, because in the main event, we're in for some surefire, absolute grade-A match between Shinsuke Nakamura and Katsuri Shibata. Nakamura almost became Intercontinental Champion at Judgment Day, if not for the involvement of one surprise, Dolph Ziggler. Shibata was victorious over Mahal and put that behind him. But before we can get to any action here tonight, we are going to hear from the WWE Champion, Kazuchika Okada. He retained his title at Judgment Day, he saw past Bobby Fish, and now the new ace of SmackDown Live, the era of the Rainmaker, gets to come finally into its full fruition. And Okada has promised us that tonight it will be all him. It will be all him speaking. No translations. No, uh... You know, no one, uh, you know, no one interpreting him. This is going to be Okada. Just himself talking within that ring. This is the time that Kazuchika Okada has waited for to address his new brand. He is finally the face of SmackDown Live and there is no arguing against it. Bobby Fish was put to rest at Judgment Day. And now it is Okada's time to shine. And that is immediately what he addresses. He's been here enough. He's been here long enough to know what to say. This is Okada's time. What a time everyone had at Judgment Day. Bobby Fish loved to talk, talk, talk. Ran his mouth, but couldn't back it up in the ring. Okada is really uh, proud of his victory. And, you know, the, the fact that he's uh, picked up English this quick as well just shows that it, he, he's loving it as well. He's loving how he can talk, talk smack to Bobby Fish in English as well. 25 months, not a day longer. And you see and you see Okada talking about how he couldn't do it without the people. And, you know, he said a broken record. Usually I'm not a fan of that, but I'll accept it on this one occasion because it really was a joint effort to bring down Bobby Fish. But you see Okada talking about the people who will make SmackDown Live great going on. Styles, Orton, Rhodes, Nakamura, Bala, just down, just some of them can, uh, can help to make SmackDown Live something special in the eyes of the Rainmaker, but he knows it's never going to be plain sailing. There'll always be your Bobby Fish, your Jinder Mahal. But it doesn't bother Okada because SmackDown Live as one goes forward, and so long as Okada is the champion, he will make it rain forever. Kazuchika Okada is the face of SmackDown Live, and he takes great pride in it. He flies the flag high with that WWE Championship, and he never wants to part with it by his side. Okada on his way to what could very well be a historic WWE Championship reign. And in many ways, I hope that's the case. Congrats to Okada and his title defense at Judgment Day. And it was a nice nod there right at the end for him to say, I will make it rain forever. Said it in English, no less, which of course, if you were a fan of Okada Pride, then coming to this universe, you would know for a fact that that was his catchphrase over in Japan. So Okada really showing where his loyalties lie, and that is, of course, the SmackDown Live. But we, uh, we'll talk about Okada, I think, a little bit later on tonight. There are many more instances to talk about the Rainmaker, Kazuchika Okada. There is many more instances to talk about Judgment Day as well, but we're going to start things off tonight with what could be very well and a, a really entertaining singles match. You see Ricochet coming towards the ring. He's going to go one-on-one -on -one against the Viper, Randy Orton, here tonight to start things off on SmackDown Live. Ricochet was not on Judgment Day, uh, as you may remember. Future Shock was not present at the event, and um, I mean to be fair, it was you know, like I said, Judgment Day was a fairly chaotic night in its own right. So the fact that he wasn't there is not really much of an issue. I mean, there was so much going on that it was kind of tough to. Um, it would have been tough to uh, get a spot on the card, but of course there was something big that happened regarding Ricochet, and of course where him and Kota Bushi are. Future Shock, of course, a tag team in the tag team division of SmackDown Live, and it was huge what happened for that division of Smack, uh, at uh, Judgment Day when G.O.D., the Gorillas of Destiny, not only made their in-ring debut in this universe, 
but also went ahead to defeat War Machine and go on to become the new WWE Tag Team Champions. That was perhaps the biggest surprise of the night. I mean, Judgment Day had a hell of a lot of surprises. I already talked about Dolph Ziggler. There was G.O.D. There was a surprise that it only took Kazuchika Okada one Rainmaker to put away Bobby Fish, whereas it took four at WrestleMania. There were a lot of surprises at Judgment Day, and one that surprise that Randy Orton wasn't a fan of was himself in that six-man battle royal to determine the number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship. Randy Orton went out first in that one. He was well, not pleased in any way, shape, or form. Apparently backstage he was irate. Pushing, kicking, throwing things around. Just out of anger. And Randy Orton now looks to take his anger out within the ring here tonight. To kick things off, you're on SmackDown Live against Ricochet. This is a very interesting match. Two different styles colliding within this ring. <clears throat> so let's see how these two men square up with one another to kick things off here tonight. Like I said, we have an interesting night of action, as we always do on SmackDown Live, to be fair. As the now long, long road to Money in the Bank begins. Over a month to go until that event. And I wonder how the brands will shape themselves up heading into it. How uh, matches will be made along the lines. Who's going into Money in the Bank as well? Because let's not forget as well, you know, it, it, it may well be a um, Money in the Bank event, but there are also going to be title matches on that show as well. I mean, who's Kazuchika Okada going to defend his title against? Who wants to be next in line? Because honestly, I don't see it being anyone from the Dangerous Alliance. After their dreadful night. So what do they go for? That'll be an interesting question to see. To ask, I guess. And the answer will be even more interesting in its own right. But let's uh, let's start, let's start uh, looking at the action here in front of us. As we see Randy Orton there with a hard uppercut. Drilling. Ricochet in the jaw. Let's see what how Randy Orton can try and hope to uh, overcome what happened at uh, at Judgment Day. You know Orton when he has a vendetta against something or when he needs to get retribution against something. He is going to get that retribution. Cover here by Orton now after that DDT, but Ricochet kicking out very, very early on to deny, uh, to deny Orton a chance to get anything going for himself. Michinoku driver there. Great strength by uh, Ricochet. This will be a great match for Ricochet in his own right. Imagine if uh, he could defeat Randy Orton here. It would be a big win for, the, for Ricochet and perhaps put him in contention for money in the bank as well. That very well could be the case. Is uh, This match could have, you know, it could have a blowback effect on what happens at Judgment Day. Just all depends on who gets the win, how they get the win. Right now, I've got to give credit to Ricochet. He's holding his own against Randy Orton. But uh-oh, Orton looking to strike here with some interesting offense. Gut wrench, neck breaker, innovative there from the Viper. And the recovery goes there, but only a one count can be secured. You see the year the younger side of the crowd, or maybe even the female side of the crowd, uh, starting to side with Randy Orton a little bit more, which is surprising given the fact that the last time I heard Orton being cheered was about well over a year ago. But Orton now <clears throat> with these stomps, repeated stomps there to Ricochet all across his body, and then Orton lines himself in weight. Ricochet is stunned and doesn't know what's going on. RKO! from the Viper, and oh, he's in the ropes though, Orton hoped that that would have ended it, and I guess didn't realize the Ricochet was so close to the ropes, or wasn't aware the Ricochet could reach the ropes, but referee says he did, we're going to have to take the referee at his word on that one, Ricochet now trying to play a little bit of Randy Orton's game there. He knows he's got to fight back here. He knows he's got to do something big to come back against Orton. And indeed, he is looking for that something. Big 450 splash there. 
springboarded off the ropes to connect with that one. Orton in a bit of trouble right now as he is sent into the turnbuckle. And the, uh, uh, although Ricochet is giving up weight to Randy Orton, certainly not showing it. Look at that from Ricochet. Incredible strength. And incredible agility as well to go that high up. Speaking of high up, Ricochet has pulled himself up to the top rope. Looking for that 6.30. But oh, Randy Orton, in a way, knew it was incoming and got back up to his feet there. But oh, couldn't avoid that drop kick there from Ricochet. Ricochet can sense something big on its way. Orton was just almost delaying the inevitable. 6.30 splash from Ricochet for a huge upset win over Randy Orton. No, Wharton kicked out at two. And you see Ricochet hunched over and after it, clenching almost as if to say, that could have been it, that should have been it. That should have been the one to put away Randy Orton, but it just wasn't. But Ricochet ain't going to give up there. Look at him now, flies in, misses the drop kick though. Orton still standing up on his feet here, still able to fight. Hard uppercut there, just floored Ricochet. Randy Orton always finds a way to dictate the pace of this matchup and to make sure that the match is going his way, not Ricochet's way. But Randy Orton got sent to the outside there. He's recovering. Oh, Ricochet just launched himself at Randy Orton. I'm not even sure how much of his body connected with Orton there off of that suicide dive through the ropes. But it certainly was enough to keep Orton down. For a long enough period of time to be in control of this matchup. Ricochet now heads up to the top rope again. Risking it all in this one. And a big elbow drop to the outside. Has Orton in his clutches now as he looks to drag them back into the ring here. To try and close this one out maybe. Can Ricochet sense that the end is near. That victory is on his way for him here. On the apron he's going to fly in. Ricochet, drop kick to Orton and he goes down. And again, another cover here from Ricochet. Hoping this one is sealed. Oh, and Randy Orton is still kicking out. Much to the dismay, it seems, of Ricochet. It's been a great opener so far between these two men. Orton has really been tested by Ricochet. Great Howard Karana into the cover right after Ricochet. Hoping it's enough of victory. Just isn't the case. Orton still pulling himself up to his feet and now another big slam by Randy Orton just suddenly changed everything. He goes into the cover here hoping for victory but again Ricochet kicks out. These two men are countering an awful lot of to, each, uh, to each other's game and making it ever so difficult to be victorious. Hurakarana cover after it by Ricochet and again just hoped to be Closing in on a big victory here to kick off this episode of SmackDown Live. Orton though with a counter. And the Orton backbreaker strikes. And suddenly Ricochet's cho ch uh, choices and chances are limited. Hanging DDT. And Randy Orton may sense blood in the water. And he may sense his prey is weak and ready to be closed in on. Well, this one's going to be problematic for Ricochet in the turnbuckle. Snake eyes. Look at how Ricochet just countered back almost immediately. Flip over arm drag there and Ricochet sends the top rope calling him again. Going to try and bring himself up to the top rope. RKO! At a minute! The Viper strikes when you least... Expect it! Randy Orton with an RKO. Drilled Ricochet into the mat. Turns him over. Hooks the leg. One, two. Randy Orton is your winner. And when the RKO strikes from out of nowhere, this one is over. What a closing sequence that one was in this one.
And Ricochet, though, still standing. And both men show respect to each other. That is not something I'd usually expect to see from Randy Orton, but that is what we have been given here tonight. Orton and Ricochet showing respect after a great opener here on SmackDown Live. It certainly was an entertaining opener, but we are going to have to move on from it. God, that RKO from out of nowhere, though, is way, way too deadly. Anyway, this is our next contest now in the SmackDown Women's Division. A Judgment Day was a fatal four-way chaotic matchup for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. Becky Lynch managed to be able to defend her title against Paige and the Moon. And this woman who's making her way out, the former SmackDown Live Women's Champion, Nikki Cross. I said after the match was done, I still think that all three women deserve a shot at the belt in one-on-one -on -one competition. This may help clear things up a little to see who gets that first shot at Becky Lynch between Nikki Cross and Ember Moon. I said, it, I said it also at the event. Two NXT rivals squaring off again. Cross and Ember Moon fought to become the first ever NXT Women's Champion in this universe. And now they look to battle here tonight on SmackDown Live to try and get their hands on Becky Lynch first. I'm not too sure how SmackDown Live are going to do things. Maybe the winner of this match faces Paige. And then the winner of that match, of course, uh, becomes the number one contender. That may be able to do things. I'm not too sure. But Nikki Cross, anyway, is uh, amped up for this one. Because any chance she gets to try and get her hands back on her beloved SmackDown Live Women's Championship, you know Nikki Cross is going to take the action. You know Nikki Cross is going to take that chance and try and grab it right in front of her. She craves that title back around her waist. She craves to be a champion. For as long as Nikki Cross has been in this universe, uh, the, the, the title has been synonymous with her. Any title in general. The NXT Women's Championship and the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. I think there was only, I think I said in a judgment day, I think there's only been two months maybe where Nikki Cross has been in this universe, uh, uh, you know, since being a champion and, and hasn't held the belt. And that is something that she craves. And a woman who has been craving a belt since she made her debut in this universe on the same time as what Nikki Cross did is Ember Moon. She has also been fighting constantly for that championship opportunity. She fought to try and take the belt away from Nikki Cross on more than one occasion. She defeated the SmackDown Live Women's Champion Becky Lynch on SmackDown Live, but it, as it turned out, Lightning couldn't strike twice and the Red Moon couldn't assist her. At uh, Judgment Day, as she was the one who tapped out to the Disarmor in that one. However, Ember Moon heads into this matchup here tonight looking to try and get that victory over Nikki Cross. Looking to be the one, as I said, to perhaps take on Paige for the number one contenders match. I'm not too sure how SmackDown Live are going to do things in regards to who faces Becky Lynch next. But Ember Moon, if she gets a chance to get her hands on her rival from NXT, an old foe in Nikki Cross, well, you know for a fact that she, she will do everything to get her hands on that belt. She will not stop until she gets her, you know, she gets her vengeance on Nikki Cross. And she gets that SmackDown Live Women's Championship around her waist. She already has the taste of victory over the champion, having defeated her last week. She would like to do it again, and she would like to do it when it counts. But to do that, of course, she has got to go through Nikki Cross here tonight. As I said, she's got to go through an old foe to make this happen. Covered by Cross here early on after that neck breaker. Just kind of, I don't even want to say sadistic, but kind of slow in that regard there from Nikki Cross. She just took her sweet time. As if to try and play coy with uh, Ember Moon, to try and get under her skin. Gets out of that suplex there and a big forearm from behind. Leads into that reverse DDT. <coughs> Look at those headbutts now. Five of them just raining down onto Ember Moon. All just a part of Nikki Cross. There's kind of sadistic plans that she always has in her mind. But Ember Moon will not fall for them. She has learned how to combat Nikki Cross and she has to learn how to overcome her as well. One big thing for Ember Moon is that the this is now the third time 
They have squared off in one-on-one -on -one action. It's definitely more than that than they've squared off in tag team or multi-woman action. She has never beaten Nikki Cross. To the best of my knowledge, that has never happened. Uh, if it has happened in a, you know, a multi-woman matchup, then all right. Uh, I, I guess I was wrong. However, if it... If one thing is for certain, it hasn't happened in one-on-one -on -one competition. And it hasn't happened on big stages either. There's a fatal four-way women's match back at TakeOver Brooklyn. Nikki Cross won that one. Ember Moon was in it. There was the match to determine the first NXT Women's Champion. Between these two women, Nikki Cross won it. There was a rematch due to the way in which Nikki Cross won the title. Nikki Cross won it. Ember Moon would love nothing more than to have a big victory over her here, but I don't think she's going to be able to get that when her head is going face first into that barricade. Nikki Cross is in her own way, being dictating the pace of this matchup. And when the SmackDown Live Women's Championship is waiting for her at the end of this all in her mind, you know she is going to be just way more off the deep end than she usually is. You know she is snapping for the thought of that title. And she's certainly not going to let an old foe like Ember Moon deny her the chance at that belt. Crucifix by Moon now. She needs to really get some big moves going here or else risk this all falling apart for her. She can't afford to let Nikki Cross... Just, uh, just what she's doing right now, really. She can't afford to let Nikki Cross have time to recover. She can't afford to go soft on Nikki Cross. But in many ways, she is. Her moves aren't really striking with much ferocity. Her moves aren't really that impactful as well. She's not doing enough to garner a victory. And that is her big shortcoming. Maybe it, maybe it's due to the fact she's never beat Nikki Cross that all of this is happening. Maybe Cross just has something on Ember Moon that denies her the chance to put her away. And speaking of putting her away, Cross may look to put Ember Moon away here. Ember Moon in trouble. Fisherman suplex, neck breaker. Nikki Cross scampers into the cover and defeats Ember Moon. And that one-on-one -on -one record for Ember Moon now sits at 0-3. Maybe even more. I may not be aware of how many more there is, but certainly to the best of my knowledge, it's 0-3. Nikki Cross, your winner here over Ember Moon. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And she ain't done yet. Nikki Cross snapping on her old foe, stomping away at Ember Moon. The thought of that SmackDown Live Women's Championship not being around her waist driving Nikki Cross further and further into the deep end, further and further into that chaotic mind of hers. Ember Moon was just the one to feel the wrath of it all. A shame that something like that had to, uh, hep had to happen to um, Ember Moon, but, you know, you kind of are playing with fire if you get in the way of Nikki Cross while she's in a phase like this while she's craving that SmackDown Live Women's Championship back around her waist. Nevertheless, we move on to our next contest now. It is a tag team matchup between two of the most uh, highly regarded tag teams, not only in this universe, but in the world. It is the Young Bucks against the Usos in this one. The Bucks are ready to put this one on. The Bucks are ready to face the Usos here in this tag team matchup. Both teams, of course, have the same plan in mind, have the same thought process in their mind as well. There is a future waiting for them, maybe, with a shot against the new tag team champions, the Gorillas of Destiny. Let's not make no mistake about it. When War Machine was defeated by the Gorillas of Destiny at Judgment Day, the entire SmackDown Live t uh, tag team division got flipped on its head. It's anyone's game now. When a team who, technically speaking, isn't even contracted to this universe, but is on the roster, is coming around, not only challenging for titles, but winning them, that changes the whole game. And that kind of leaves it to, like I said, anyone's game. Anyone can now kind of stake their claim at the SmackDown Tag Team titles. Anyone can claim and just be like, I want to be WWE Tag Team Champion. We want to be WWE Tag Team Champion. In a sense, there is almost 
<clears throat> it's like everything is just being clean swept, regardless of your win-loss records, regardless of if you've never been in a tag team before. Anyone can almost just go after those belts. And it's all because the Gorillas of Destiny completely changed everything up at Judgment Day. But, in the same regards, I would also say I think the Gorillas of Destiny need to keep uh, looking over their shoulders because there may well be a rumbling from War Machine on its way wanting their rematch. The Gorillas of Destiny are not here tonight. They're actually over in Japan performing with the SmackDown Live Tag Team titles. Uh, WWE Tag Team titles, rather, should I say. My apologies. What does that say? That really speaks volumes when a team who isn't contracted to this universe are the champions and are not here tonight because they are performing <coughs> at, at, at the, uh, the company of which they are hired to with this universe's belt. That's a bit weird when you think about it. But if it gives opportunities for us to have matches like this, then I'm not going to turn it down in the same breath. We have, I think, it's Jey Uso starting things off against Matt Jackson here. Matt Jackson, of course, and the Young Bucks, former WWE Tag Team Champions, lost the belts to War Machine back in January. They'd like those belts back around their waist. They know that there is a... There is now, like I said, anyone's game for those belts. Anyone can have their hands on their belts if they... If they are craving them. However, well, everyone in the tag team division has got to be craving the shot at those belts. But, um, everyone in this, you know, everyone in the SmackDown tag team division with their fresh slate. Some may get some, uh, preference over the others, though. Like, Bucks and War Machine may get preference over the Usos or Future Shot. Or because they've won those tag titles before. That may be the case at all. There's that innovative tag team offense of the Young Bucks that really sets them apart from a lot of other teams. Stun gun there by Nick Jackson now as he heads into the ring looking ahead to the top rope. May have been a mistake of his though. Jey Uso's crawling. Jimmy Uso wants in here. Nick Jackson trying to stop the tag from being made but he couldn't. Jimmy Uso's in now. Off the tag, and Nick Jackson's got to face him head on, round right for him. And went clobbering down to the mat. Jimmy Uso now, flying forearm, and Nick Jackson goes down. Brings himself up to his feet as quick as he can. Oh, and the atomic drop brings him right back down. Jimmy Uso fighting on his own right now. His brother recovering on the outside. Sent on splash, though. A cannonball splash, I guess that would be considered more of. No suplex though, Nick Jackson just way too quick for Uso there. Jimmy <clears throat> in a bit of trouble. Maybe as he might be feeling the wrath of the Bucks in a second. Runs into the corner, does Nick Jackson to make sure that this tag can be made as quickly as possible. And it seems as if it's pretty obvious what they're looking for. More bang for your Buck from the Young Bucks. One, and wow. Jimmy Uso kicking out that early. That's not the key move that the Young Bucks look to put away matches anymore. They, of course, rely now upon the, the Indie Taker, as they have coined it. To put away matches. So we'll see if, uh, if this one will be put away by that. However, the Usos may also look for their signature Uso splash to try and, think, uh, to try and get the victory here. And that is a move straight from not only their father, but also the move that put away War Machine at Judgment Day to win the Gorillas of Destiny to the tag team title. Super kick by Jimmy Uso. Seen super kicks on all sides now. Tag made into Jay. Look at this now. The Uso set up in position. Uso splash! And is the Uso Penitentiary about to lock in the Young Bucks? No, Nick Jackson came in and made the save for his brother. And a drop kick there will bring Jey Uso time. Will bring time down and may give his brother time to recover as well. Matt Jackson brings himself up right up to his feet there. And now comes running in. 
And Jey Uso ducks under. Super kick drills him. Up on the shoulders here now. Matt Jackson. Fireman's carry. Rolling sent on. And goes right up to the top rope after it. Looking for a 450 and connects with it. Into the cover he goes. Hoping this is enough, but it's an early kick out from Jey Uso. And Jey denies the tag being made there as well. You know that he counted that Irish whip and Matt Jackson wanted to bring him into the turnbuckle. He wanted to bring him in for the, for the Indy taker. And again it gets countered. Matt Jackson trying here to, try to finally get Jey Uso in the turnbuckle. This could be, oh, it could have been again. The consistent reversals here from Jey Uso is only causing more and more trouble. Matt Jackson, uh, Nick Jackson trying to get involved here on the outside, shoving his shoulder into Jey Uso. Grabs him here from behind. To give them some time to work with, Matt Jackson gets back in the ring now. And is able to slug away a little at Jey Uso as well. Throws him into the turnbuckle. And now the tag can be made. Took them long enough, but this could be the one to end it. Nick Jackson holds him up in position. Matt Jackson comes in. The Indy Taker connects. Will that be enough to close out Jey Uso? It's a cover. It's a count. It's a kick out. And look at how the difference in that one kind of shows. Matt Jackson, or Nick Jackson rather, made the save for his brother. Jey Uso, though, kicked out through his own ability. And, he's, and not only did he was able to kick out, but he's also fighting on right now. Still continuing to go here with... Uh, the strikes here, but I think one thing is for certain, Jey Uso needs to make a tag right now into his brother. Needs to let Jimmy go after you. Needs to let the fresh man in. However, one thing that is certain is that the punishment that the Young Bucks have taken in this matchup have left an effect on them. They are reeling as a result of the Uso's attacks here. But Nick Jackson just comes flying in there with that Tornado DDT. Striking Jey Uso, busting him open as well. And that is why he needs to make the tag into his brother. Desperately needs to make that tag. And this may be it. This may be that tag. He puts him into the turnbuckle. He makes the tag into Jimmy Uso. And are they going to look to swap the, the rolls around? Up high is Jimmy Uso. Uso splash. Will that put away Nick Jackson? Matt is slow to get in the ring. And Nick Jackson kicks out. Jey Uso sends Matt out to the ring though. Nick is on his own here. And then I think Matt Jackson just got assaulted on the outside a little bit more by Jey Uso as well. The, the Usos are fully... Working over the Young Bucks right now, and Nick Jackson is in a world of trouble. The former tag team champions truly being torn apart here by the Usos. Here the turnbuckle we go now. Look at this from Jimmy Uso. Cross body came flying in. Nick Jackson is in huge trouble. The Bucks themselves are in huge trouble. You see Matt kind of getting aggravated on the outside that the, nothing can be done about it, but a huge flying forearm there brings Nick with the hope of getting back into this one. He sends Jimmy into the turnbuckle. And the tag is made into his brother. And it seems as if more bang for your buck is on its way again. There's more. There's bang for your and... Buck connects. 
but only a one count is secured after it. What does that mean in the mind of the Young Bucks? They've taken nothing but consistent punishment from the Usos, and they still, with all of their big moves, cannot put away this brother, these brothers. Truly is a matter of which is the better brother tag team as well. Although that may be the tag team champions. Into the turnbuckle is Matt Jackson now sent into it. A big stomp in the chest. And like father, like sons, the Usos come in there running. Just charging their weight. And Matt Jackson sent into, sent all his weight into Matt Jackson. And it was enough. The punishment was too great for the Young Bucks. They couldn't take any more. The Usos have just beaten the Young Bucks in their SmackDown Live debut. That is huge for the Usos. That is a big, big win for them. They just beat former WWE Tag Team Champion and in such a fashion that they, they didn't even require a big double team move to put them away. They didn't need another Russo splash. It just took just the work of Jimmy Uso to finish that match off. That shows the punishment they inflicted on the Bucks and the punishment that could be coming the rest of the way of the SmackDown Live Tag Team Division. That really, that really speaks volumes. We'll see where things go following on from this, I would imagine. Certainly a whole lot to talk about from there but we move on now to our next contest we move on to a match involving two men who smacked who uh, Kazuchika Okada talked about earlier saying that it's down to these men to really leave an impact on Smackdown Live it is these guys who can drive it further Cody Rhodes and AJ Styles will meet one on one here tonight both men were in that six man battle royal to try and become the number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship Cody Rhodes hoped for victory, but was unsuccessful in this challenge. Didn't get what he wanted. He was eliminated, I believe, penultimately. Or maybe even, no, he may have been eliminated before that. He was eliminated by, if I remember correctly, Bad Luck Fale, though. And Rhodes was not very happy. He was not happy about that one. <clears throat> not pleased with his elimination. Wanted something better. But he gets to take on the man here tonight who won that match. Who was victorious. And is the number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship. The man who will meet Finn Balor at a later date. And although there is great confusion in amongst the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, there is no doubt about the fact that AJ Styles is going to have a shot at him at some point. I talked about it, I, I, I touched on it really at the start of this show. Zig, uh, Ziggler, well I'll get to him in a second. Uh, Balor and Nakamura were having one hell of a match to start things off at Judgment Day. They were going back and forth, knocking the tar out of each other to try and become Intercontinental Champion. But, when the match was getting ready, it felt like the head into its closing stages when it really felt like both guys were slugging everything at one another. Dolph Ziggler of all people came in, knocked down both men, hitting zigzag on uh, Shinsuke Nakamura and putting Finn Balor through a table to close out that match and he closed it out by holding the Intercontinental Championship up in the air. Ziggler is not the champion. Ziggler is not a number one contender. I don't even know if Ziggler is contracted to this brand, but that certainly hasn't stopped other people from coming over here and taking some success. However, that did mean that Finn Balor remained the Intercontinental Champion. The match was ruled a no contest. And AJ Styles is the number one contender to that belt. But tonight, it is not about that Intercontinental Championship. It is not about Finn Balor. But it could be about a lot more to Cody Rhodes. A victory here could do him a world of good. He really wants to make things happen for him once again on the brand where a long time ago he found success. He found the World Heavyweight Championship. And the Intercontinental Championship. 
Cody Rhodes had a great time on Raw as well as the United States champion for some time was putting on, putting in great uh, strides as champion and did everything in his power to try and win that belt back as well. He was unsuccessful but now a new chapter awaits him here on SmackDown Live and what a debut match it is on SmackDown Live as well, the show itself against AJ Styles. No battle royal to worry about, no throwing each other over the top rope, it is all about the will to win, the desire for victory. Who has the bigger ability within them to be the winner here? Cody Rhodes right now setting AJ Styles up, heads up to the top rope there and hits that cross body. Very nice bit of athleticism by Rhodes but a kick out there from AJ Styles denies the chance of uh, victory. Well, to be fair, it would be quite surprising if he got it this early on in the matchup between these two incredibly talented individuals. Both came over in the draft. But for all that SmackDown Live lost, this is a clear <coughs> indication of what they gained as well. Cody Rhodes now with a hard knee into the gut of AJ Styles there. Turns him round. May have something big in mind here. Oh, an atomic drop. And he ain't done there. A second one to Styles. And Rhodes completes them all. Three atomic drops to AJ Styles. Oh, that is going to hurt. That is going to hurt the groin of AJ Styles. But the phenomenal one keeps on fighting here. Single underhook brain buster. Just dropped Cody. Cody Rhodes able to kick out at one there still. You you really feel that they are just kind of <coughs> sensing each other. Still feeling each other out in this one. How can they overcome one another? How can they, you know, find a way to beat the other? What's the other strengths and weaknesses? Rhodes with a hard forearm there. Brings Styles a little bit backwards and oh, what a drop kick from Cody Rhodes that could turn the tides in this matchup a little bit. Rhodes feeling a suplex of some sort. Hard knee in the head though by Styles gets him out of it. And he brings him up into a fireman's carry position. Down into an elbow drop. Styles now has Cody right where he wants him. Ushigoroshi by Styles. And will that lead in? to a surprise early win for the phenomenal one. Cody trying to crawl away, but Styles has him locked in position. Phenomenal forearm. Is that what she is that all she wrote already? No, Cody Rhodes kicked out of two there. Prominently got his shoulder up as well for the referee to see it. But AJ Styles now knows he has to keep on fighting here. So too does Cody. And Cody feeling maybe a, a comeback on its way here. Russian leg sweep brings down AJ Styles and Cody Rhodes now getting himself into position. Like father, like son, in with that elbow drop. What more does Cody have within him here? He needs to really get a big comeback going. He needs to get a big flurry of moves. May even need a crossroads here. You never know with the impact that move has going for it. It could be enough to be victorious. Could be enough to put away AJ Styles. Lovely knee in the uh, chest there. Cody turns him round here. For him in the back and he's going to go for it. And he'll get it. Crossroads to Styles to put this one away. There's two. And oh. Styles got the shoulder up in time. Cody seemed a little bit flustered by it. He really hoped that that would be enough. But it just wasn't the case. Northern Light suplex immediately into another cover. Cody just go for a few pins one after the other there to try and be victorious. And now Rhodes started to get a little bit desperate there. You see it in the way he's acting now. I imagine, you know, when you've been without that United States Championship that you were really making strides with for some time and when, you know, you, you have all this ability within you but it almost feels like you can never act on it or you can never get things to go your way and after the disappointment of not becoming the number one contender whereas AJ Styles did, 
That may all have something to do with, uh, you know, with how Cody Rhodes feels. That may be why he's resorting to a few more desperate actions than usual, like we just saw. Kind of disrespectfully grinding a a AJ Styles' face into the mat. Cody now has him up on his shoulders, though Alabama slammed his Styles. Doesn't matter if there's respect or not in the match, that is a vicious move. No matter who you are, and here goes Cody now, really riling himself up. Double forearms here, and AJ Styles reeling in the turnbuckle. Another forearm, running Bulldog. Styles is down, and Cody is starting to fire up here. Traps the art leg in, and a face buster there brings him down. Really intricate move by Cody, but it's not enough. Styles kicks out at two. And a big elbow in the face there by Styles. And look at this now, moonsault by AJ as well. This is, that was truly a phenomenal flurry there by Styles, but he's not done yet, you feel. Certainly isn't. Ushigaroshi connects on a, uh, connects on Cody. Cody Rhodes now starting to reel a little bit. Had hoped for victory. But may feel it starting to slip away. AJ Styles is on the comeback here, maybe. Oh, great counter though by Cody. I'll give him fair dues where it is due. That was a fine reversal. And again, Cody Rhodes here from behind. He's looking for the triple atomic drops again. Raises it up for one more. And right into that groin goes. Those knees go for AJ Styles. That is not going to hurt no matter who, who you are. That is going to hurt, sorry, no matter who you are. Back suplex. Face buster. Hooks both legs into the cover. But he can't put away AJ Styles. It's actually a move that AJ Styles has uh, used more than once. I remember him using it at WrestleMania against Seth Rollins. Missed that forearm there. And a missed opportunity could be the capitalization for AJ Styles. Power bomb. Great rollover. But he kicks out right away. Cody, though, is slow to get up to his feet here. And this could be AJ Styles' advantage. Think about that. When, think about how that reflects on him as AJ Styles looks for the phenomenal forearm. One missed punch. Phenomenal forearm results in it. A one, just one missed strike. And a second phenomenal forearm is hit to Cody. And with one, two, three, AJ Styles wins from one missed punch that is the fine margin of error that you have to work with when you're in the ring with AJ Styles and that is the fine margin of error of error sorry that Cody Rhodes just found tiniest of slip-ups AJ Styles wins I said about how things must be eating away at Cody that only has to add to it but it's AJ Styles who is victorious in this one. Styles continues his momentum going on the path to becoming potentially the Intercontinental Champion. He's a Grand Slam Champion, and he'd like to have that United States Championship around his waist, correct me if I'm wrong, for the third time. Might only be the second though. I'll have to double check on that one. Anyway, time for our main event. Time for what is going to be an absolutely incredible matchup. Shinsuke Nakamura, Katsuri Shibata, one on one to close things out on SmackDown Live. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, good to see Nakamura still standing at the Judgment Day. Finn Balor isn't here tonight after taking the elbow drop through the announce table. Nakamura, though, is, and he's ready to compete in this one. And what a competitor he's going to be squaring off against in Katsuri Shibata. Man who's been here for a short amount of time, but a man who has truly made his presence felt on SmackDown Live as well. Assisted in some ways with Kazuchika Okada in his fight against the Dangerous Alliance. Helped to close that out once and for all. And now, Nakamura will be the one to meet him in the ring here. Nakamura will be the one to face Shibata. There's no bad blood or anything. This is just a matter of two men wanting to beat smoke out of one another to be victorious. I am excited for this one, because this one's going to be a real good contest. This one's going to be a hard-hitting contest. 
That strong style that both men are synonymous with is going to come out in its fullest form. Oh my god, he's here again! Dolph Ziggler is on SmackDown Live! It was more than just a one night thing! Ziggler from behind on Nakamura! Pummeling away on strikes to the King of Strong Style! What the hell is Ziggler doing here? Why? Why is Ziggler all of a sudden on SmackDown Live? What's his reason for being here? Dolph Ziggler from out of the shadows it seems on more than one occasion has now jumped Shinsuke Nakamura. The last time we saw Ziggler was when he lost his world championship at Armageddon back in December. And Ziggler now is after Nakamura again. Power bomb down on the ramp. Dolph Ziggler losing himself here and forcing Shinsuke Nakamura down the ramp. He is dragging Nakamura all the way down with a vendetta on his eyes here. With a vendetta for, sh for, for this. Dolph Ziggler with steel steps now. Cracking Nakamura in the face with them. And now repeatedly going after Nakamura here. But why? What is his reason for all of this? Dolph Ziggler is just flurrying those steel steps into Nakamura. And the King of Strong Style has not a chance yet to fight back. The second time in a row, Ziggler has attacked him from behind. Oh my god, Ziggler's got him up with that power bomb position again. Nakamura is virtually dead. Wait, on his shoulders! Power bomb down onto the steel steps. Ziggler, though, has one final move he wants to close this out with. He turns around Nakamura. Zigzag to the King of Strong Style. Nakamura attacked again by Ziggler. Why? is the only question I can ask. I don't know any answers. Ziggler ran into the ring, grabbed a microphone. He is back for himself. The show is off. That doesn't answer any questions. Dolph Ziggler leaving us virtually almost in the same level of in the dark as what he was at Judgment Day. But as Dolph Ziggler just said, he is back and the show is off.